Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna go on record and say it. I remember when Insecure first came out. Yeah. I knew I would become a fan. I'd be slightly obsessed with it. I remember when Entourage first came out. That's another one of those, you know, one of those series that came out on, uh, I think that pro that platform was HBO. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's when people are able to kind of really tap on the pulse of our community, our environment, how we grow up. Um, but it's not just on the surface. It's, it's, it's layers to it. And um, I had a chance to watch our good friend who's with us right now. I've been a fan of his since 2014, 2015. Yep. He's often a part of my conversation. It's not many people I bring up in conversation mm -hmm. with my friends when we're not on front on a camera in front of a mic. Right. I'm always interested in him because he's good friends with my brother, Big Vaughn. And the two of them are kind of like like minded in a way that their minds are not like anyone else's. <laughs> you know, they're, <laughs> you know, they're very unique in their perspective. They're very honest. And this man has the kind of honesty in him at this stage in his life that I only wish I could have had at my stage, at, at, when I was at the same stage, he is, um, in my life, the ability to be transparent, the, the ability to be honest, the ability to be unapologetic, uh, and to be able to do those things when you don't necessarily have job security, or you may not necessarily have enough to, to keep you going for the next year. You know, your career could be ended by some of the things you've said. He has never pulled back on that. And not only that, he's an ill-ass MC Hell who yeah. gave me one of the biggest compliments anybody in my position would want to have. What's that? He said I would only <laughs> rap for Sway. <laughs> Y'all heard that? We got the one and only Vince Staples here. Why? Hey, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Musician and actor. And so much more. And, and director. And writer. executive producer. <laughs> First, first, I got to I gotta thank y'all. I just want to say first, I'm happy to see y'all. I ain't seen y'all in a long time. Thank I'm happy you, to see y'all. Yes. Thank you, um, You know, it's always comfortable up here. It's always, you know, real up here. But why you give me? That's a lot <laughs> on the top end. <laughs> <laughs> Entourage, crazy. Insecure, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Man, now you, you giving some big shoes to fill, man. But I appreciate you. This is why, though, because <laughs> I see your potential, right? Mm. And I know you know your potential. And you've been thinking it's easy to get kind of caught up in a web when you come into entertainment. I don't mm -hmm. care how you get there, acting, music or whatever. You could get stuck in a web. You could get stuck in a box. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've realized that when I went to MTV mm -hmm. and the, and the, the um, exposure grew and it became global. And I'm sitting there thinking everybody is aware of everything I'm doing on MTV until I left MTV. And people was like, I didn't know you did that shit. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and it's like I thought I was the king of the world until I stepped outside of my box. When I look at you, I feel like Vince has stepped outside of the box and he's seeing different things. The way this series opens in the first episode, um, you guys are in the street. It's Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And then I, I couldn't tell what I was seeing. It looked like a woman was working into a department store. And, mm -hmm. But the ambiance, the surrounding noise, it's chaos here. It's people yelling over here. It's shooting over here. And the woman is still walking about her business. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at that. That's a statement. Yes. That's how we grew up in Oakland. I didn't realize how loud it was mm -hmm. until I looked at that that first scene. Tell me about that first. What was the purpose of that? I mean, that's why I love y'all, bro. Because, like, um, it's, 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 a, it's a fight to put certain things that matter to you mm -hmm. and, um, into these things when other people don't understand it. So to say, um, for some context, you know, Corey from New York, Corey been managing me since I was 18, mm -hmm. probably 17, turned 18. I've uh, been around helping me, really managing me since I like kind of focused on this. And tell him I was from Long Beach. He'd be like, oh, yeah, you go to the beach? And I was like, nah. <laughs> and <laughs> then I started thinking, and I was like, I, 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 when I was a kid on this elementary school called Stevenson, my mom and my pops had just split up. And it was like, you got the boy, I got the girl thing. And my dad always had an in and out situation, so... He was he was home at this time. You know, my dad always tried to do whatever he had to do, but he lived he liked the water. We lived closer to the beach, kind of closer like seventh, uh, on like Alamitos, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but we never went to the beach. Mm. And then we started traveling. I remember the first time I did a show in Byron Bay, um, Australia. I think that's Australia, or New Zealand, one of those places. And we stayed at like a like a nice resort type thing. And it was like my first time like knowing what like water sound like. Really, mm, wow. and I li I grew up right there my whole life. Like, I didn't live on Fifth and Temple. I didn't live on on Fourth. I we didn't live close to Ocean. I didn't live everywhere on the East Side of Long Beach, wow. like close to where I've been a kid. But I never noticed it, and that was always interesting to me. And like soundscape, it's always been important in my music. Like that's why I started my first couple um 
albums with the, with ocean sounds because mm -hmm. it was like it was it kind of represented like something new that was familiar at the same time and like but nobody ever asked me like kind of why i do those things but mm -hmm. that that was very important because that's a that's a donut shop right there on the hood on each side that's a real donut shop yeah and and, and, and it's really grimy right there but it's beautiful like if you notice how the colors are accentuated you notice like the like it's important to shoot that from high up so you can see outside of like we ants you know mm -hmm. what i mean and we already feel bad about ourselves most of the time we live in these communities so to kind of just see that on oh, at scope like how beautiful it looks but you got the water right here you got this over here you got that over here but you know the the, the cambodian people that stay right there that operate these businesses the hispanic people that's operating these businesses the black people that's operating these businesses they come to work every day mm -hmm. and we was kids they never judged us they never looked at us crazy it was always not in here and it wasn't you know you wrong you mm -hmm. know what i mean so st opening that up was important because if you working at the 24-hour donut shop in the hood <laughs> you gonna see some hello shitty. you know <laughs> what i mean so it was really important thank you for asking because it was really important to, sh to encompass all of that at once i think it has to do with i think you are an, uh, an anomaly to a lot of folks in the business for whatever reason we always feel like no matter what you say mm -hmm. there's about 10 volumes of more wisdom or maybe that's just my perspective mm -hmm. uh, uh um, behind it so when i'm watching your work I'm really trying to figure. It's like a puzzle for me. Mm. What did he mean by that? The why, hidden meaning. Why did Vince do that? Why did he? Hmm. Huh, what's what, what? What was the? What was the reason behind all of that? And so you talk about how to hit a, a overview scene from a from a, from a camera point from a camera position. Mm -hmm. Don't think we didn't notice that, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real Spike Lee, Steven Steven Spielberg way of thinking, right? Um, when did you start developing that kind of vision where you could not only see be seen as an actor, a writer, but also a director? Was it a video you did that made you go, hmm? Well, I feel like working with smaller budgets in music, okay, for mm. one, um, is a thing. Um, I've always been appreciative of every opportunity we have, every partner we've had, but the truth is the truth. When we first started, you know, I don't never say this kind of stuff, but it, I, as I get older, I realize it's important for people to hear. Um, I, had a, I had a situation at home. My, I never asked Corey for nothing. Yeah. When I first started working with Corey, I asked him like for a hoodie. I'm dead. He's asking for a hoodie. I said if I find to go to the studio, I need like forty dollars. I'll be good for like a month because I was thinking about bus and train, like a dollar fifty a day. I was like, I'll be good for like a month. And then I was like, Hey, we need like twenty five thousand dollars for this lawyer, so I need to figure that out. And he was like, Well, let's start shopping the deal. It was super early. We just finished the Mac Miller project. We saw we do the deal. Joey Ie help us out. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey Ie bounce. We was about to bounce, but then the legal department was like, "Hey, we not really doing deals right now." But they 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 sped the deal up to be like to get it done before it can be flagged, like mm -hmm. on some on some like looking out type situation. And um, they helped us as much as they could for artists that they didn't want to sign in the first place. So now you got to do a video for twenty five hundred for mm -hmm. five thousand, mm -hmm. and you realize how much this stuff costs. And that sounded like a lot of money to me at the time, and you realize it's crumbs. So just trying to utilize perspective for visuals. I remember we came out here, we shot a video um, for a song on the Stolen Youth Project called Stuck In My Ways. It was a, it was a standout song that they liked and the, the concept the director had, shout out to the director and everybody that worked on that video, it was a memento, the film, and it was kind of recreating a memento film in New York through a, through a hotel. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to use it. I was like, it don't got nothing to do with me. Like I don't, mm. That's not how I see the world. And Corey had paid for it out of his pocket and he was like, we ain't got to put it out. Because mm. it, don't, it, don't, it don't connect with you. So then my thing is I never wanted nobody to have to do nothing like that for me because I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I do my own stuff, you know what I mean? So I don't want nobody having to do nothing like that for me again. So the next couple runs was um the Blue Sway video. Mm -hmm. He was working with Spike Jordan from Philadelphia, and um that was early on. He's still, he still doing videography. He's he doing amazing stuff now, working with Lil Uzi and all kind of things. And he was like, yeah, how do you see, um, how do you see the world? type situation was a question I was asking myself and I told him like the idea like black and white um I guess black and white photography has always been interesting in me and um I feel like we walk through life right and you have your perspective and your perspective becomes bland so with the blue sway video specifically I was like all right I wanted to be black and white but I only want like hints of blue mm -hmm. and of course I don't understand execution but he was like why and I was like because you kind of don't like we live in a space really where it's majority white people mm -hmm. in Long Beach. Long Beach is the majority white, Hispanic, Southeast Asian, and black people. Like, say, if, I, the number might be wrong, but I think it's right under half a million people or, like, it's something in the hundred thousands of black people in Long Beach. and it, I mean, of people in Long Beach. And it's 20,000 black people. 
Thirty thousand black people. Oh, have died. Wow. No, I never knew that. So stat. it's like, so you walk around, you don't really see that many black people. Yeah. And we see somebody black, it's like, oh, that's a nigga he tripping. You know what I mean? Mm. So like the blue was like to kind of accentuate the fact that we have standout moments. So you'll have a black and white. You have a black and white video where everybody's having fun, but then you see certain colors and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like it's really, it's really important to like showcase discomfort to me because I kind of been uncomfortable most of my life, like mm -hmm. around other people, situations, family, shit like that, and especially when I was younger. So. When I start thinking about videos in that way, then we got that first video. Then we have um, the the um, the lift me up video mm -hmm. that we shot around the corner from my house. I was staying in San Pedro by the projects, and then we shot around the corner from the house. And um, the idea of just like being in control of like your body and like I'm I'm thinking ideas and not necessarily shot composition. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I, w I want I want us to kind of be floating, but I didn't know how to execute it. So then we got their version of floating. I Instead of the one, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So then, when it's time to do North North, I'm like, all right, we have five thousand dollars profit for North North probably, mm -hmm. and it might have been a little bit more, a little bit less. But I remember that being like, it was like an important thing. And, and we picked, we had a, a a a makeshift set that was closing the next day, and we shot it in there. My whole concept for that video was like contrast, negative and positive things, kind of living in the same space and not knowing what's what. So at that point, from what happened with what lift me up, what happened with these other visuals. I, I got to the senorita was a great idea, mm. but it wasn't my idea. I just we kind of talked about like certain. He took certain things I said in interviews about music com, um, consumption. As far as like it's like the zoo, it's like you know white people just look like oh look at the niggas go. That's how I always yeah. felt about music. Mm -hmm. And then he was like I have an idea based on what you said, but when it was time for North North, we didn't have no money. We didn't have no. It was like this is a song we liked. It had nothing. The label nobody was like thinking about it in that regard. They was thinking the song generic or the future thing was gonna mm -hmm. be the ones they want to mm -hmm. look at. Mm. So at that point, I started thinking. How do you create the composition in a way that you understand it and you can you can kind of explain it to people? So the the North North video is just like the opening scene of the Andy Griffith show. Mm -hmm. It's with black That's people. Right. Yeah. So it's like being That's able to, so being able to <laughs> pull from that. You One of Sway's favorite shows, by the way. Yeah, I, and, and I used to watch that show with my grandpa when I was a kid all the time. <laughs> That's what happened with Sway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like in every day, my grandpa didn't had the best like kind of ling ing English and things like that. So like he, he, it was like an important moment for us. So, but I always thought it was interesting because it's like you hear about jail, especially with your pops going to jail, and like a lot of people in my family been incarcerated. I didn't think jail was bad because. Yeah. You watch the Andy Griffith show. Oh, that's you know that as it crazy as it might seem, as a kid, it's like oh, my dad in there. He got friends in there. Mm -hmm. That you know what I mean. Like the cops is cool. Everybody cool. Like so that was my thought process. So I wanted to kind of showcase an environment, like contrasting like real gang members and like my homies and putting them inside of a jail situation where everybody looked like they having a good time. Mm -hmm. And um, that was that was really important to me. But I it took years to know how to kind of articulate that and then taking that further and further and further into the visuals that we did people start leaning into my music videos more than not more than my music but it's a connectivity point especially mm -hmm. at that time now they don't mean as much but back then that's how people kind of discover stuff so i never been naive with who i am i never had you no know, super big records we just work hard you know we got good friends that help us out and they'll play our songs like Vaughn, who like, gonna play yeah. anything we do and i always appreciate him for that but people always oh, i like his interviews or i like this or i like that i never had the ego to be like nigga look at what i want you to look at yeah so then it made me think all right how do we figure that out like can we figure out some sort of television thing can we figure out something we went to meetings and they honestly shit on us mm. for like it's not this but we do we these are the ips that, that we're working on everybody and it's no. like because we, we weren't we weren't every company you can think of uh -huh. um that we every big production company everybody with office they was like no but they said no in a nice way they were like well, these are the things we're working on and we're trying to develop. If you have music for these things, then we'll help you. So it got to the point to where I had, a, I had some decent things. It's like probably after Big Fish Street, right after. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I didn't take it no kind of way. I was like, all right, I ain't ready. So what can I do? So we started doing a bunch of voiceover stuff, started doing a bunch of um, auditions. We didn't get, we auditioned probably every other week. For mm. probably three, four years, we can get one callback. No, people don't wow. hear this part of the story. Yeah. Damn it! You auditioned every wow. other, for three years. It was taking improv yeah, classes years. too, right? Yeah. Well, I I had to t I had to take an improv class in regards to the show. Just to, like I said, it's all in preparation, right? Certain people that was working on the show, like we doing table reads, we doing stuff. They was like, he ain't ready. Mm. They said they it. Was huh? like, they was like, he ain't ready. And then yeah. uh, Kenya, being who Kenya is, Kenya was like, look, he's like, he was like, well, they did. They have means and means and Kenya. I'm gonna tell you the truth. They think you ain't ready. He was like, he was like, I understand that you might think you're ready. He's like, he's like, based on how they were, that dude not ready. So, can you embarrass? Yeah. So yeah. he was like, he was like, take this class, take that class, take that class, take that class. Now they can't say nothing. And I did all that. I'm leaving. The, I'm leaving the um, the writing room. The writing room start 
at eight o'clock. I live two hours away, so I'm getting up at like three, four, driving so I can be there early before everybody else. The riding room probably close um, five, five, six. So mm-hmm. now I'm driving an hour to uh, Santa Monica uh, Boulevard, Hollywood, to get to the improv class, and then I'm coming, going back home, and I'm I was doing that for probably five days out the week, six days out the week. So I had the writing room class, and then like life. So I had to do all that. And, um, yeah, just trying to – because my thing is I didn't want to do something that was um, typical or traditional. Mm-hmm. Like, even we had meetings, like, they, they, they were like, this, is, this isn't funny. I was like, it's not funny to me, but it's funny to y'all. And that's the concept of the show. So it's like you think about standpoints of like, all right, the white man getting shot at the end of the – At the end of the first episode. Mm-hmm. I was going, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to give that it up. It made a yeah. lot of people. So we saw Netflix. We stream and Go watch okay, it. Okay. It's on Netflix, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go see that shit, baby. The fifth staple show. You better go watch that. Mark my words. It's a hit. Mark my words. But it's like just certain things or certain things are telling. Like we got – we got certain notes about that being too much, but we never got any notes about anybody black mm. getting hurt. That part. We got a whole episode of Vince getting shot at. We got no notes from that. We got a whole episode of Vince in jail. We got no notes from that, except mm. for one note, and then it had nothing to do with none of the black people in the thing. So it's like, I think the perception that we all have, which is, I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm saying it's understandable. It's always been interesting to me to kind of try to have a take on the, on this perception because it's like, this, when, when, within the show, the stuff that black people see and understand, they'll see as funny. Yeah. The stuff that white people see and understand as far as black people, they'll see as funny. But nobody in the show is telling a joke. Wow. Like, it's not one joke written. It's not, it's one, not joke one joke set up. It's just, like, literally, it's day-to-day life. And the things within that day-to-day life that you see as funny is what makes it what it is. Mm. The Vince Staples Show on Netflix. Damn it. Wow. That's what I mean. Like Ben says, uh, and then after he talk, you know, it's like volumes of wisdom that Word. he hasn't hit. Up, he hasn't hit up deep, deep, deep. Look, real quick. I know you watched the whole series. Right? Yeah, I watched every episode. <laughs> ah, you I watched it. the first three. You yeah. are so, yeah. yeah it, it, it's tough because there's so much. I mean, I, I told you some of the stuff that I love when you came into the room. I mean, like the Easter eggs and the way that the nods to other films are woven into the episodes and into the plot was just like for me. I'm such a huge movie nerd that that kind of stuff was like, I well, love it. Like thank mm-hmm. you. you know what I mean? Even wearing like certain shirts that are part of the Easter egg as well you know I won't get into that Mm -hmm. but like what you just said right now gave me a different way of looking at the show when you said like there's no jokes and I didn't really even think about that because I was laughing not realizing that these weren't meant to be funny it was just life and there's a there's a quote where you said um I think you said my grandfather told me if you do the crime you do the time I wish he had told me just not do the crime Mm -hmm. so after you finish this series I know reliving some of these like moments that were inspired by your life. Did did it ever like dawn on you like, damn, I never really thought about it until I got to see it, instead of just being part of my memory. Um, to be honest, a big part of that is Corey. Like, you know, when when starting to try to get into music, you know, the finances in music aren't necessarily what most people think they are, right? And we right. all know that. Yeah. So it's hard to kind of just be like, I'm a fly straight. And I ain't never, like, everybody who know me, I'm not, like, super burnt out. I'm not extra. I'm not trying to walk around tough. My circumstance and my environment is just my circumstance and my environment. But I don't, like, I don't pick on people, bro. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I end up in a situation, like, anybody who know me, like, all right, something happened. Yeah. 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 So, it's, like, certain situations, like, I'm on the phone with Corey. I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, what's oh, what happened, bro? Shit, man, you know, I'm, I got to call you back. The baby shower just got ready. And then he called me back like, hey, what did you just say? <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, the police right here. I got to call you back. And then he would be like, you understand that that's not normal, right? And I was young at the time. I didn't think it was not, nothing. I was like, I can't be on the phone if the police is right here. Like, they're going to be like, who you talking to? That's all. That's the only mm-hmm. place my mind is going. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but you understand that that happening is not normal. It was a cop that, 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 that operated in Long Beach. He's still a cop now. And my homie had called me and was like, yeah, man, uh, whoop de whoop got mom over here. How they pulled over again? They said they they said you got a show. They said they're gonna shoot you off of the stage, and they be they uh, they be playing on music. I'm laughing, me and him laughing. Corey like, who said what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, nah, bro, that's just how he get down. Like he be trying to scare everybody. Like he, he like that's just like a game he play. Corey like, man, he like we finna get a lawyer, we finna do this, we finna do that. And like me being younger and just that being my reality, I never thought nothing of it. Yeah, but. He kind of helped me realize, like, and I would hear him say it in means we trying to pitch a show. Like, he's like, Vince will tell you something that he think you that he thinks is um, that you think is that he thinks is completely normal, and it'll be ridiculous. He's like, and it'll be like crazy, and like almost like uncomfortable. So, like, the aspect of not having the jokes written was a very hard sell for the show because it's just visual cues and visual humor, and it's like 
it's not funny, which is what makes it funny. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. sometimes life has these moments where all you can do is laugh at them. <laughs> you better say that. Facts. That's, 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 that's all you can do. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Tracy had to be uh, Vince Staples is back. I mean, yeah. I told you he would. <laughs> so happy that you're back, Vince. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. You're so easy to root for, my guy, and I mean that sincerely. Thank you. To um, Because you are incredibly multifaceted, you have all these hats, you have your hands in all of these different directions, to contrast writing for this show versus writing music you've said that writing music comes very easily to you Mm -hmm. you can write a song in five minutes you always have music um did that same ease come with writing for this where you always writing with a television series in your mind alongside creating albums and also is it easy for you to identify when you are creating for yourself and when you are creating for the viewer and when you take those risk or chances or edits for the viewer does it always feel good for you um uh, thank you for that question um i feel like writing in general like as i get older i realize it's just like something that i'm able to do um i feel like expectation is important like with music the music i grew up liking and the music i grew up you know being i would say affected by in both a negative and a positive light were extremely personal so I never viewed music from its successful measures, like ever. Yeah. Like the the music I wrote, I never wrote a song and was like, this is going to be a hit, this for this. I write, the songs I write are because I need to specifically write these songs for that moment. And I've been lucky enough to have people around that's accepting of that and be like, we just going to put this where we can. But I, I've never had a conversation where like, we have means with labels. They'd be like, oh, what's a single? And I'd be like, you tell me. Because <laughs> I already got what I got from it. Like I've never heard a single in my life and be like, oh, that's the one. That's just not how I view music. But with television, it's way different because there's so many people at play. And um, I wasn't writing the show at first because when I did the YouTube series for the Vince Stable show, it was all improv. Like, we got a set, set up and it's just like, oh, and turn the camera on and Vince do something. <laughs> and then everybody else just kind of play off of that and we have wonderful people and like talented, successful people in the cast that just were able to riff off of that. Yeah. Um, and we would kind of loosely write their parts and whatever. I would just play off of whatever we had to say. As, as far as the scenery, it's not going down like that in this. So they was trying to write uh, pilots and trying to figure stuff out. It was it just wasn't clicking. And then Calmatic, who I, you know, it don't not get enough credit for, you know, his 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 place in the show and just making it happen and, you know, it, producing it with us and just being consulted and just, just helping. He was like, hey, this ain't going to happen if you don't write it. He was like, so mm. you're going to have to write it. He was like, go buy Final Draft, wow. $200, go buy it, put it on your computer and write it. If you, ain't, if you don't write it, it's over. And I was like, all right. So I bought it, and then I called Maurice Williams, one of the writers. Well, I told Chris, I'm going to write this thing. He was like, all right. And then I called Maurice Williams, uh, one of our EPs, and I was like, how you do this? <laughs> and he's like, well, when you start, you need to see him and press space bar twice. Boom, all right, you did that? Yeah, all right, now press space bar again. Now to the end of the dialogue, press shift and press that, then put in the person's name. All right, cool. Now do you do lay lines, do lay lines, and he taught me how to do it. And he sat on the phone and told me how to format to use the application. And then he wrote the script. And then uh, the script got approved. But they had to still clean it up in certain regards. But we were missing certain parts of the story. So over time in that writing room, I had great people who were able to be like, this needs to change, this needs to change, this needs to change, because this isn't what a story is. Mm. And the part I didn't understand was page cuts. Mm. So they like, oh, 30 minutes is 30 pages. We need 30 minutes. Cool. All right, so I write a 30-page script. I don't want to do too much. Not realizing that we're going to cut five to 10 pages. Mm-hmm. So then it comes to the editing process and being like, all right, now I got to turn 15 minutes in a 15-minute story in the 20, 25 minutes. So being able to have good writers around, being able to have good people around, helped because they was all like, you do it. <laughs> like just because of, like say something that might take them one to two weeks, I was able to do in like, thankfully, like 30 minutes. mm Wow. Like 45 minutes, and I'm not. If you say I don't, it ain't good or this ain't right, I'm gonna just do it again. You're fine, yeah. I'm not gonna argue you down. Mm-hmm. So it was extremely different because music was way more personal, and it's, it is about yourself because it's from your point of view. With this, the point of view as a writer is more visual, and it's also more in the setup and like the dialogue. I'm mean, see more in the setup than the, it's more in the dialogue than the setup. Got it. So if you have two people talking and it feels like you, that's perfectly fine. But the way that you get into the shot, the way that you get into the scene, the way that you get out of the conversation, that has to be a certain way for it to work. Mm -hmm. And it was challenging at first because, excuse me, that's not my skill set. And, but I had from Crystal Jenkins, Amy Hubbs, uh, Winter Coleman, Maurice Williams, Ian Edelman, Jackson DeLoach, Lola Rogel, Jeff Padnell being in the um, 
right room with me and Corey. <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. My bad. Being in the right room with me and Corey, they just always help. Mm -hmm. And Ken being like, hey, you're doing too much. <laughs> All right, cool. And then Netflix being like, hey, like we had multiple versions of the show. like, And it was like, this too dark. This too this. This too that. And I literally had to start over. Like from scratch, like we was halfway through the room and I had to start from wow. scratch. But you just have to be understanding of they know how their platform works. Yeah, the writers know how television works. And I was luckily I was around people that were straightforward enough to let me know that what I was doing wasn't gonna work. And I'm just I've never done this before, mm -hmm. so they gave me a lot of grace. Mm. Beautiful, Vince Staples. I love that, and I hope wow. a lot of creatives that are out like that watch this take cue from this. Yeah, wow. right. Yeah, just really quickly. Um, Tyler James Williams was here yesterday from Abbott boy. Elementary. And what you're saying and a lot of what he said yesterday, it just resonates to my heart. And just because of time constraints, I just would not feel right if I didn't leave you today by saying thank you for doing the work. Mm -hmm. Like, you could have had a whole bunch of people doing a whole lot of stuff. I know how this works. Mm -hmm. And the fact that not only did you practice obedience, and discipline and faith and all the different things that goes into what t what it takes. Congratulations yes. for Thank doing you. the work. Really God yes. bless you, young man. Thank you. God Vince bless Staples, you for doing man. the work. You a jewel, brother. You a jewel. Woo! We have a lot of respect for you, brother. I love y'all, yeah, man. It's mutual. It's mutual. A lot it's mutual. of respect for you. I love the way you're thinking, man. It's, yeah. um, you, you came into this business and you was able to find pull back the curtain yep. and, and find out it's like the Wizard of Oz at mm -hmm. the end. You mm -hmm. go back there. It ain't the shit you thought it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you're for probably real. looking like, wait, all these people I've been around all these years, <laughs> they never said nothing. <laughs> But they knew too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't what it ain't what you think it is. It ain't. And some people don't ever realize that, and they stand at your inertia, mm -hmm. and they chase that tail, that loop, and they go 10, 15, 20, 25 years in the business and realize the business is it doesn't love you like that. <laughs> you have to get out and go get it. And so I want to say I commend you mm -hmm. for that, for having that understanding, but Thank also you. Uh, allowing your art um, to inform. Um, to educate whether you're trying to or not, um, but you're letting people, you, you're informing people, mm -hmm. right? You're equipping our minds and you're teaching folks that you could think outside of that box. Amen. Where are you with music now? Uh, I play some stuff. Uh, I just I just finished uh, working on some stuff. I'm always working on music. Okay. Good. I think the, the thing about music that's interesting to me is that, like when I was a kid, bro, I was, I was so like uninformed on music. I know I, I've just been thinking about stuff as I got older. Like when I was a kid, bro, I didn't even realize like what a concert was. Yeah. And then I started doing them. And then like, I remember the first concert I went to was after I was making music. And I was like, oh, it was like a Diana Ross thing my mama wanted to go to when I mm -hmm. took her from Mother's Day with her. I had a little bit of bread. I took her and my grandma. And uh, I was like, oh, this is what a show's supposed to be like. You ain't just run around on stage and stuff like that. You know what <laughs> I mean? But I, ain't, yeah. I didn't know none of that. So with music, I'm going to always have affinity for music. And I think music is important. And I'm gonna be real, whether I want to make music or not, I'm gonna still make it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, because what what I learned from just my 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 I guess path in life, and one thing that I feel like we kind of gotta realize more as entertainers is like it's not about you. Like yeah. whatever you get, whatever you do, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. And the second you can realize that, like you'd be a lot more content and happy. Like it's about not even about the consumption, but just the fans and and all that is the people who are like you who come after you that need information on the world they about to walk into because nobody told us nothing nah. Word. and nah. you know if they did it might have been a little bit different so vince staples is here man. Yes. man love love it man good job man <laughs> i'm gonna save the bars for next time vince I'm gonna have you next time. Yeah, I'm, I already know. I, we, we, I'm gonna be back in a couple. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know yeah. already know what this is. I, I got to turn around. We, we, yeah. we, we yeah. had to get re, you know. Yeah, it's been you know some what years. Mean? We had to we get re. We need a reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vince needed to see my face now. I'll it's hunt been him. years. It's been some years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, shit, Corey. We got to go back to New York. Cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I want to say, um, I have so many kids who come up to me. So many um, people in the community that come up to me and repeat whatever it was you said about freestyling mm -hmm. on our show. When you say, I only freestyle for swaying Well, them. because you know what it is. Like, it's a difference between coming from a fan standpoint, and this is what I like, versus, like, this is what I am. Mm -hmm. And mm. I don't think what people realize, it ain't a good feeling to sit in front of these motherfuckers who don't, who don't, who think it's only, like, entertainment. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way behind the words and the position and these things, like. So I just appreciate it. you get oh like you said people knew how it was right mm -hmm. it ain't that many people that work within these spaces that even know what it's like to like I got asked a question the other day on the red carpet and not to, I keep it short lady was like 
and I know she meant well, but she was like, what was it like to fall in love with hip hop? I'm like, I ain't never had, I'm waiting for that moment. Like, I don't know what you mean. And they was like, oh, you don't love hip hop? I'm like, no, I'm black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. I ain't never been introduced to hip hop. Like, how do you get introduced to hip hop when you black? I was born in 1993. It's not like it came out. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? I had to get introduced to other things, but I feel like, you know, it, it's just always grateful to have like people around who understand the elements of what's going on and what it takes to do this and craft it. Like, it just make it much more comfortable. But I tell you this, it's 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 always a uh, a wonderful feeling to know that people understand where you're coming mm-hmm. from and mm-hmm. you have that connection. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you, Vince Staples. Next time, let's have fun. We'll bring yes, some sir, Okay. Yes, All right, yeah. give it up for Vince Staples, yeah. man. The Vince Staples Show on Netflix. Netflix. This is that.